freezing morning. It's even freezing in St. Mary's. It's crazy. So, me and Chris are making a big breakfast. And I am going to make some delicious bacon. We're going to have a hoe cake, which is a big biscuit and a skillet. We're going to have some fried potatoes um, in our bacon grease and some good old um, gravy. All right. And eggs, of course. So let's get started. I bought this bacon. I've never bought it before. And it was on sale. It's called Cobasa smoked meats coming out of San Antonio, Texas. It says it's a bacon that won't shrink like most bacons. So we're going to drop this bacon and then we're going to hop over there and start our big old biscuit. All right. How is everybody this morning? I know up in New England, Chris says they're getting a blizzard. really bad blizzard. A huge blizzard. And so Bless y'all's hearts. I'm sure you're in the house. There's a lot of people indoors this morning. Well, good thing it's Saturday. So, That's they don't true. have to be going to work. All of them. It come in right on time, didn't it? Yep. If there ever is a good time for a storm like that. Alright. So, I'm going to rinse off my hands and we're going to hop over here. And we are going to make... A good old hoe cake. My mama called it a hoe cake. Now, I have people argue with me and they tell me what they think a hoe cake is. But in Georgia, when I was growing up, a hoe cake was a big biscuit in a skillet and you flip it out like a big pound of cornbread. And that's what we're making this morning because they're amazing with gravy. All right? So, we're going to start right this hoe cake ready. And if you're not good at making biscuits, this is the thing to do. This is That's a no-brainer if you're not good at making biscuits. Right here. Alright, so you're going to have two cups of flour. It's self-rising. White lily. It's what me and Chris grew up eating. Our mama's used white lily. And you're going to use about a quarter cup of shortening And you're going to use your blending fork and you're going to blend the two together. Now, this uh, mix is going to be, I'm going to get just a tiny bit more shortening. Uh, this mix is going to be a wet mix because it's going in a skillet. And When you put your shortening in your flour, you want it to be about pea size. You don't have to blend it forever. If you've never seen one of this, this is a blending fork. Now, when I uh, first started my show, somebody sent me one of these and said Julia Childs used one back in the olden days. And they call it a Foley fork. And I made biscuits so much, she thought I needed one. And boy... Has it been an amazing addition to my kitchen over the years? And many others have ordered it as well. So, what a blessing. Let me turn this bacon a little bit down. We don't want to burn it up. All right. So, we are going to put this milk in here. And I'm just eyeballing it. I have a recipe, it's on the website. If you just go to uh, coloredvalleycooks.com, click recipes and then breads, and then you will see my hoe cake recipe if you want exact measurements on everything. But I add enough milk that it's kind of just a, like a wet batter. And it's wetter than the, her normal biscuits. Oh, way wetter. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's good and wet. Almost like you're making cornbread. Alright? Now what we're going to do, mix it in good, and we're going to put some shortening in here, and I'm going to grab where I stuck the flour back down in here. Make sure I use it. 
and really do a good job putting your shortening in your skillet. Don't be shy, okay? And then you're going to get this batter in here, and the oven is set at 450 degrees. I'm trying to pick this up so y'all can see it. And we're just going to put this in the oven. It's going to be done by the time everything else is. We're going to fry up some potatoes after this bacon's done. We're going to have a good time in the kitchen this morning. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven and then I'm going to wash my hands. Oh, I'll put it right there. I want to put it down here because I want it to get good and on the bottom. Off in the hands and then we'll get that going. I'll flip that around. It ain't shrinking, is it? No, not really. It's not. It says it won't. Okay. I didn't know whether to believe it or not, but it's working. Pretty doggone good. Will you turn around a piece of bacon? Now, a lot of y'all like it. Y'all like to put your bacon in the stuff in the oven, and I could have, but I like my bacon on the in a skillet. I just can't help it. Chris said the other day. Oh no, my sister said the other day that it's trending now to flour your bacon. Did huh. you tell me that, or did my sister? No, it wasn't me. I ain't okay. Heard of that. So, you know how we floured the meat last night uh, when we cooked? Some people are saying that they're flouring their bacon and frying it up. I have no idea if it's any good or not. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I like for my bacon to cook on about a, a, a low to medium temperature. I don't like for it to get too brown too quick, and I really had it up a little bit high. Now, the next thing we're going to do is um, we are going to make gravy and we're going to make some eggs and some potatoes. So, I'm just trying to decide what I need. I need this for the gravy. You want this or you want butter? I want that. This? Okay. We'll make Mama's gravy. Mama is shortening. Well pooped. Uh, Mommy is shortening, and we're going to need the sifter. We're going to put some self-rising flour in our sifter and have it ready. Go ahead and check on this. Still cooking up pretty quick, ain't it? Sure is. This is this eye over here does not get low. I've told y'all that about this eye, but it looks good, don't it? All right, I'm gonna wipe my camera off, and then we're gonna make. Hmm. We're gonna slice our potatoes because it's almost time for the bacon to come out, and we can throw the potatoes in there. And then we'll make our gravy. Mm -hmm what we're going to do. One of the good things about doing, about cooking is uh, trying to time everything so that it gets ready at the right time. And that's what I'm thinking about. I don't normally fry potatoes. That's not something that I normally do. These are done. Yep. Alright. Those are done. You're going to put the potatoes in that bacon grease, right? Yep. Hmm. We're going to fry up our potatoes in this bacon grease this morning. Yes, we are. Just going to do everything wrong. Hey, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. It's a freezing weather celebration. Oh, guess where we're going, y'all? Me and Chris are going to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. This week coming up, um, his birthday week. 
and we are going to celebrate in Vegas. We yeah. never, well, I went when I was in my 20s, but I only got to go for the weekend, and Chris has never been, and so we're excited. We're staying at the Caesars Palace. So if you live in Vegas, contact us through email, and maybe we can meet up, okay? Now we're going to slice up some potatoes, and I'm just going to use my slicer this morning. Um, on here. Oh, I thought you was going great. Okay. No, oh, I'm slicing them. Gotcha. Let me get my... I was going to say. I'm going to get her glove. Get my glove. And uh, everybody's got a stand-up grater, don't you? So if you've got one, pull it out and use this part. And get your taters grated. Okay. We're going to fry them up. So once I get on this last potato, I may only need two, actually. Yeah, that looks like a lot. It's just me and Chris. So let's go ahead and slide this back over here. It keep getting hot mm -hmm. to put these potatoes in. And I really don't think I need all that grease either. I'm going to pour some off. Whoa. That one about got away from me. You little turkey. Man. And that glove keeps you from getting cut in case you had never watched before. It works great. Yep, it does awesome. And I did wash those potatoes before we came on, y'all. And I just throw the glove in the washing machine. Okay, we're going to pour up some grease in my little handy-dandy bacon grease holder. Because I don't need all of this in there to fry my potatoes. And I'm not putting it in our gravy. I know a lot of y'all like it like that, but me and Chris don't. We don't like bacon grease in our gravy, okay? We're weird. Mama didn't raise us eating it, and so uh, we don't eat it that way. There they go. I thought I turned that up. No. You just stick it off the eye. Oh. Okay, so we're going to fry up these potatoes. I'm going to spread them out good. And we're going to salt and pepper them. And I turned it up some. And while they're getting brown on this side, we will uh, crack some eggs. Salt. Pepper. I salt and pepper everything while I'm cooking. I know some people don't, but I do. Mama always did. Okay? My mama always did. Boy, we are just... Zip it along. Zip it along, yeah. Alright, let's turn on the oven. Y'all can see that start to rise in there. That big biscuit. That's the best biscuit you'll ever eat on... The planet. The planet with gravy. <laughs> with gravy. How oh, crazy. All right. Gravy. What are we going to make our gravy in, darling? Well, what are we going to make it in? I guess I'll make this. Make it in here. Let's make so. it right quick, I guess. Might as well. Might as well. We ain't got nothing else to do. Might as well keep y'all busy. Mm -hmm. So me and Chris are going to make shortening gravy. You can make shortening gravy. You can make... Uh, my daughter likes butter gravy. Uh, let me, I'm not going to put that much in there. You can't really, any, any of it's good. Shortening good. gravy, butter gravy, grease gravy. Whatever you use. All good. However much shortening or butter you use or grease, you equal that with flour and your gravy will turn out good every time. Just try to throw that in there. So we're going to let this melt in here and I always... Uh, then I brown my flour. All right. Potatoes are doing good. Biscuits cooking. Gravy's happening. Let's get out some milk. We're gonna have to get somebody to come over here and eat all this stuff with us. Good Lord. We're gonna have to call somebody, Tammy. We can eat it 
for supper. I guess so. We we'll have some leftovers. And this is enough food for two days. I'm out of meal, Daddy. Two meals. Uh -oh. There's some more in there. This is two percent. There's some more in the other refrigerator. Okay. okay. Let me go get some meal while y'all watch them potatoes. Okay. In any of the stuff we use, some people are asking where did you get the glove or what are those things on the oven and stuff like that. You can any of that stuff's on collarbodycooks.com. So you can go on there and look, see what it is. If you want to get it, you can get it. Or you can just look at it. Window shop. Joanne had to go out while I was in there. She's crying. That's the cat. Three cuts. I'm gonna use three cuts. And that should do it. Why ain't this melted yet? Daddy? I'm going to need something to um, flip my... It's actually centered right there. No, it ain't, is it? No, it ain't. Never mind. I'm always me and Chris. Watch out, sweetie. Let me get some. Come on. Hey. Need my gravy whisk. And we're about to start it, y'all. Let's check out the taters real quick. They're probably not even close to getting brown yet. Well, there they are. Some of them are. We'll go ahead and flip some of these and then we'll start our gravy. This is a fish spatula, but it's great for stuff like this. And this is a nonstick pan, so I'm I'm not really scraping the pan with it. I'm just barely running it under my potatoes. I'm being, I'm being careful. Don't they look good, y'all? All right, let's get over here and get this going. So you melt your short and get it hot. Then you add about as much flour as you have shortening. And when you mix it up, it should be kind of thick looking. If you get it just right. And them fancy people over there, chefs and stuff call it roux. We call it making gravy. Well, I think some other people call it White sauce. Some people call it white sauce. Well, I'm saying the Cajuns and stuff call it roux. People in Louisiana. I, oh, really? I don't know that they're all fancy. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of them had French in the background, though, right? Yes. Well, that's why they call it roux. But, yeah. you know, us old country people mm -hmm. that never had no French background, mm. we call it gravy. No we French. call it mama's gravy. All right? Now, I'm going to put some salt in it. Make sure you salt your gravy. It ain't no good without salt and pepper. Let me just tell you that. Is it, baby? Yeah. I mean, nope. No. All right, so now what we're going to do is brown it. It takes a few minutes to make a good breakfast, y'all. you got to wait on your biscuits to cook. And they're getting there. Big old biscuit. I'm going to turn it up. We're going to turn it on convection and turn it up. And maybe it'll uh, get done quicker for y'all. So this is just barely starting to brown on this edge over here. Takes it a minute. I want to check on these again. Doing okay. Mm -hmm. Good. You know what I like in my fried taters? I like butter in them. Mm. Let's put just a little bit in here. Okay. Help it brown a little more. That's probably enough. Once it melts, I'll slide it around. Mm. Yep, all them people from Louisiana are letting you know they are not fancy people. I bet they ain't. <laughs> they just 
just come from a different background, though. Yeah. You know, everybody's come from somewhere. True. All right, here we go. That's good and brown. We're going to add our milk to it. And we're just going to pour the gravy back up into this when it's done, okay? So add your milk. Take your whisk. Um, if you've never had a gravy whisk, they're the best thing ever because they get right on the bottom of the skillet. And they get all that off the bottom. And you always have beautiful gravy. Never lumpy. Maybe that's why Mama sifted her flour too. It probably keeps helps it keep from looking lumpy as well. Probably. But my mama used her sifter every day. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all don't even have one. Y'all get you a sifter and get don't get one of them real pretty kind because most of the time they don't work. I'll give you some tips on the sifter right quick while we're waiting on this. If you don't have one. Or if you got one and it seems to take forever, I'm going to show you why. Now, I like my potatoes brown. A lot of people would take them out about now. But me and Chris like our taters brown, don't we, baby? Yep. So you can take the ones that ain't brown yet and kind of slide them on the bottom. You might want to whisk the gravy. That's oh, fine. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Mama's cooking. All right. Oh yeah, it's good. See? Mm -hmm. Not even good and hot yet. No. All right. I'm gonna show y'all something about a sifter real quick while we're waiting. Um, let me show you the sifter. This sifter I use all the time. Let me take some of the flour out of it. When you buy a sifter, if you buy mine online, it's this kind, and so it should work good. But if you go to Walmart or somewhere and you get you a sifter or you find one on sale, and especially if it's the one with the flowers all over it, grab this right here, turn it. If you can't hear it scraping good, hear that scrape? If for some reason the wire wants to not scrape the bottom, Sometimes you can bend it and make it scrape the bottom, but if it's not working right, don't buy it because it it won't it won't sift. It don't work. Yeah. Now it's starting to get warm, and as soon as it really starts to warm up, it'll start to bubble, and it'll almost bubble over if you're not careful, and then you can just pour it up. It's almost there. Real close, y'all. And these are gonna about, about to be ready to come out. And then all we're gonna have left is eggs. And I'm not from since we got time. Alright, I'm gonna turn this gravy off. We're gonna put these in here. Ooh. Then we're going to start our eggs. They mm -hmm. should still be hot when we get ready to eat them. Don't forget to turn you. Oh, you're going to cook your eggs in that same skillet? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Show him. Here's our gravy. Look. Good. It looks good, don't it? Mm -hmm. there. Lord, I about can't pick this up that long. I'm about to drop it. It is heavy, isn't it? Yes, this is a heavy skillet, mm -hmm. y'all. Whenever you gotta pour something out of it, it ain't easy. All right, I'm just gonna leave this right here for now. I usually put water in it. You got By the time our eggs are done, maybe that'll be done. I'm gonna put a little water in that skillet. Will you turn that front skillet off for me real quick? Somebody asked where you went to culinary school. The culinary, let's see, Colorado culinary Valley. institute of Collard Valley, Polk County. Yep. <laughs> that's that's the culinary. School. I went to college, but I got an architectural engineering degree. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that, but if you watch, I, I actually posted it this week, or I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't know I have an engineering degree because most people think I'm just because of the way I talk. You know, everybody has an opinion. 
Um, and they say I don't have good grammar and all that stuff. Well, you know what? Engineers never. I have to. When he has to. And you speak well when you have to, too. Really? Yes. You think so? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, what? Just cook your eggs. Well. Have you used your degree? Yep. Lord, yes. I did architectural work uh, over 20 years. Um, when I was growing up and in college, I did a lot of school. I mean, not schools. I did a lot of houses. And then when I got older, I did all commercial work. Where's my eggs? I did all commercial work. And uh, I worked on churches, schools, and um, I was an actual project manager and did the full set of working drawings and commercial work. The largest project I was ever over was about, I think it ran about $16 million, y'all, and I've done all, all of the working drawings hmm. that were architectural um, by myself. Didn't even have a team to help me. And um, it was a charter school in DeKalb County. But, I mean, I did a lot of work. That was just the last ones I worked on. I don't like this eye. I'm sorry. We always get it on that eye and have to move it. Yeah, that's an eye that's super hot, even on low. It doesn't have a simmer. You want to simmer your eggs a little Why bit. Why does that say call service? I don't think you... What's happening there? I have no right. idea. Let's cancel it and then put it back on bake. There you go. I don't doubt this stupid... Look, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all. This oven is a KitchenAid. We went out of our way and spent a lot of money on a KitchenAid. We've had it serviced three times, and now it's got a call service button coming on. Hmm. In two years. Yeah. I do not recommend the stove. If this one tears up, I'm just getting a basic stove next time. The heck with it. All right. The heck with it. Let's use my flipper that we already got out. You can trade with me. All right, we're going to flip these. I think I can get under there with a fish spatula. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, all this fish spatula is not like a regular spatula. Let me get on the egg side. That would be smarter. I mean the yolk side. Y'all know what I mean. Get it. We getting it. We getting it. We getting it. Get our hoe cake out and have some breakfast. Have a hoe down. Hoe cake and hoe down. You want some ketchup? Yeah. I'm gonna get out my homemade blackberry jam. Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna eat. You want me to take your eggs off, Chris? Yeah, they're ready right now. Well, I will when I get back in there. Chris likes his eggs not quite done, and I've done the overcooked on that. No. Be right. They're still runny a little bit. Which one? This one? Yeah. Yep. That one's still got a little bit of... Now, I smash mine and get it good and done. I like a done yellow. Chris likes his not quite done. Let's get out the hoe cake. The star of the show. Are y'all ready? Hopefully it got done in there. No matter what my oven said. We'll see. We shall see. Yeah, looks done. Okay. It's not brown as it ought to be, but it's it's done. Mm -hmm. Maybe that thing just came on because we touched it or something. I don't know. No, I put it on a uh, convection bake, and that convection bake, bake setting has never really wanted to work. Oh, I got you. It's a bunch of bull. Excuse my. Oh, let me show y'all what my shirt says today. Hmm. And that's how I feel about my stove. 
That's how I feel about this KitchenAid stove. Yeah. No. Okay. Let's make a plate. Don't make a plate. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna make my plate. We'll use Chris's for a photo op. I gotta get a scooper for my gravy. Well, that gravy's nice and thick. All right, here we go. Here we go. So here's your hoe cake, and you just grab it, and it's super light and fluffy. It's hot. Let me get some. Before I get burned. And once it cools a minute, it, it won't be so hard to handle. But you take your biscuit, and you do like that. Mm -hmm. And get a little more. And you put your gravy on it. Look at that. Mm. Just like that. You bacon. This is big old bacon. I'm going to taste it. I've never had this bacon before. That's some good bacon. And y'all can go back to the front of the video because they're going to ask what kind it is and all that. So I'm sure. We got, oh, you going to show them? Here we go. I got it because it was on sale, but I'll buy it again. Comes out of Texas. Hmm. All right. It's real salty, though. Mm-hmm. Woo. That's good. Woo. Get your eggs. All right. Let me get me some taters. I mean, your eggs. I got I an egg on here. I know, but I keep saying eggs. You're acting like me, Chris. Or potatoes. I'll get that one. Is that a big enough breakfast for you or what? Who is cold and ready to eat? And I got my homemade blackberry jelly with whole blackberries in it. Mm -hmm. And the dog's barking. As soon as we get finished, they know mm -hmm. we're done. I can guarantee it tastes good, all of it. Tastes real good. Y'all have a wonderful day. Keep warm and come back and see us on Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love you.